the elephants crossed right across here uh -huh. for this shot in Gunga Dean, 1937, looking east toward the Inyo Mountains. So much was done here at Ruiz Hill. And they came right across here. Yeah, right, right across here. Now then, turning around, this is the uh, this is the area. I told you this whole area was where RKO had shot Tycoon with John Wayne when he was building the railroad through the Andes. Uh, and it was here, off to your right here, Jerry, this roadway going back in was where they, they uh, had the, that was where the, the tunnel entrance was. They, the railroad tracks came out this way and a, a false front, a, a facade spanned from the big rock cropping on the right across to the one on the left. I see. And when we get a little closer, you'll be able to see, unless you can zoom in on yeah. these guys here, you can see the O-rings. Okay. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, right over there. So yeah. I can talk? Uh -huh. Okay. Then if you zoom in on those guys, you can see the big O-rings that are stuck into the rock, and they use those to stabilize guy wires uh -huh. to help, uh, you know, to help keep the, keep the set. Okay, yeah. Stable. And there's about a, actually it's a little bit over there, okay. but you can make out these rocks here, and you can and you can pick them out right up there. Oh yeah, that's them. See, and then this was the, the facade that they built all the way across. Oh okay, yeah, for the tunnel. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that's in your boat. Tunnel entrance. Uh huh. Yeah, right. right. And that was right. But it, it spanned from that area right across to this one, and you can still see part of the paper mache. Yeah. Coming that white line coming down, that vertical line up mm -hmm. on the rock coming down, and immediately above that, right against right against the skyline, okay. there's an there's an O-ring outlined right against right over here. Oh right, yeah, I see it. Right yeah. above the okay, there it is. Right above the uh, yeah the line of plaster Paris or whatever it was. I forty six, forty seven, mm -hmm. whenever that was. Yeah. Gosh, isn't that something? And right up here is a John, another John Wayne location. About uh, 10 years prior to that, let's see here. Let me get my bearings. Okay, this is about right. Okay. Here's a John Wayne shot mm -hmm. with Yakima Canut and Glenn Strange and Jack Kirk and whatnot. See him sitting here, and you can make out these same formations directly. Right there. Or behind. See, this is what we do in the festival. We take these photos, enlarge them, and put them on pedestals right where they were taken 40 years ago, mm -hmm. 50 years ago, so that people can look and say, by golly, Agnes, that's where it was. Okay. Here's John Wayne and Yakima Canut again, and you can see the teardrop rock right back there, mm -hmm. and, that, and that spire and these formations here. There they all are. There they all are on their horses right here, right in front of us where all the brush is now. Uh, it's, it's getting easier to find these various photo locations, excuse me, because you get, more, obviously you get more and more familiar with the rocks and with the terrain. Mm -hmm. I just, like the two days I've been here, you know, it's slowly start to see a particular landmark. Again, in uh, Tom Mix's Riders of the Purple Sage, Mix has discovered uh, the camp of the so-called masked rider and found out that it was really this girl in the, in the famous Zane Grey story. But you can see the, the sloping rock, yeah. Tony standing on that slope of, uh, of rock out there, and so yeah. on. Right here at this same area, was a Gene Autry location about 20 years later, Autry and so forth, and you can make out some of the rock formation directly behind us. And in Robert Mitchum's, uh, in his first starring picture, Nevada, 1944, we celebrated his, it was his first starring role, and we celebrated his, the 50th anniversary of his first starring role here last year, and a scene from that was done here as well. I've always found fascinating. You have an area where so many scenes all over the Alabama hills, you have an area where so many things were done at exactly the same spot 
maybe 20, 30 years apart. Or, and you'd never know it. No, you don't. <laughs> uh -uh. Oh, yeah, boy, that would have hold up. Uh, oh, absolutely. They put anything you know, in there. And you can see, I mean, this is a pretty good size thing. You see the hand and mm -hmm. the portion. Uh, that is. That certainly is some of the plaster. Yeah. Plastic. So that facade went from here all the way over to there. Yep. Huh. That Roy. Gene, as you saw, I did two or three things here. John Wayne, Buck Jones. But they uh, haven't got Roy in anything down here. You have no gunsight pass, you know, from up there uh -huh. on the mound. Uh, might lend itself to a to a good shot oh, yeah. for you. Well, you know, unless you centered it from around the uh, around the Yellow Sky Arastra here, mm -hmm. uh, might be your center point. You know, the artifact in the yeah. middle, in the middle of the of the Alabama Hills. Is that thing on? I can describe what this Go is ahead. real quickly. Sure. The uh, uh, the Mexican Arastra. Uh, what they would do, they would uh, they would place the ore within this rock circle, and then here at the center post, there would be a a, a, a another post coming out, uh, and out, out here would be a mule or donkey or some other jackass like myself pulling <laughs> this thing around. And if you see over here, zoom in here, Terry. Here's a rock over here that has a. a an attachment, and and you would hang on the end of this other lever. You would ha be dragging this thing around. It would bounce around, crushing oh. the ore. I this see. would bounce around, crushing the ore, and you would be able to extract your gold. A rather slow process, I grant you, but mm -hmm. it did it get the job done. And this was built for the uh, the uh, film Yellow Sky with Gregory Peck. They came, ran in, hid right here where we are, looking down at the old ghost town of Yellow Sky, which wasn't really down there in real life. It was on the Fox back lot down in what is now Century City in Los Angeles. And then there's a cat head up there. Yeah. And just down to, to further orient you, just to the to the left and down the hill halfway is a is a horizontal, almost horizontal rock that looked balanced. Oh, I see it. Yeah. That is that is Gary Cooper Rock. Oh, that's when it. When we go all the way around and walk our way up to it from the other side, that's going to be the rock you will look at. That's the one. No, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of the rock that's in the book where he's hiding, sort of underneath that it. Is it. That is that it. That is it. Okay. That scene was not in the movie, but that is the spot. That's they the did spot. take that picture there. Okay. There's a little roadway right over here. Here they are filming a scene in Yellow Sky. Camera platform, the camera, Gregory Peck, standing right over there on that on that slope. Right there. See, now just let me put this up again. Okay. See the ridge? Yeah. Now just there, right there should be again. And that's where he was standing. The mine was in Yellow Sky. You can just barely make it out behind these guys. You can see the timbers there making, making the entrance. That was built right back against that facing there. Okay, yeah, I see the so recognized. So you can see these yeah. rocks right here. Uh-huh, right there. And that was built in here. That's why you don't see anything there. That was built up as part of the, the outcropping that they yeah, built the for the, to, make, to make the entrance to the shaft, right. 
Uh, let's see, I guess that's about like so, yeah. In a John Wayne movie, he was a, he was a, uh, a newsreel photographer, and here's part of the British Army. Again, we were in India with the machine guns and so forth, and you can make out this little notch right over here, and these other rocks take on their, their shapes. They sure do. Once again, the British Army in India, here in the Alabama Hills in Lone Pine. <laughs> Here with the cavalry horses, they're in a race with a small tank. More about that in a second, but you can see the, the two peaks, these little outcroppings here with the uh, mm -hmm. Bone Pine Peak in the background. Isn't that something? Can you believe most people mistake that for the Mount Whitney? You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, do you have a story to tell when you get home. Sure do. In fact, let me zoom in on the real Mount Whitney right now. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> This area here, let's see, actually we're a little bit, but I want you, I want you to see this, so let's... Oh, the old, yes! Let's go on up here a little bit further. This is a, a stunt here that... Yak, or... Uh, and Joe Irigoyen. Oh, okay, Joe was Irigoyen it... Joe Irigoyen did doubling, doubling Gene. Let's see. We'll get into about like so. Okay. Joe Irigoyen, doubling Gene Autry jumping the convertible, which was right across the roadway there. Now you'll notice here in the picture that they have some brush that they have stuck in uh -huh. to hide the rock wall that is there. And we have only just, just last year found out for what picture that rock wall. Oh, right there, built. okay. Yeah. yeah. You got it? You got it. Remember we saw a moment ago, we saw the Cavalry horses racing. Uh -huh. Well, they were racing. This is a shot taken out on Movie Road. Mm -hmm. they, the cavalry was racing this small tank. Preston Foster and James Gleason were the supposed drivers of the tank. Uh -huh. It was a race to determine, is this one army fort going to go mechanized or stay with the cavalry? Well, in the course of the race, they had to come here, and you can see where they, they had a, a rock wall built all the way across the road and the cavalry horses were able to jump the wall without any problem. Oh, okay. But then the tank, when, it, when the tank got here, let's go forward a little bit. I want you to see okay. how this rock wall is constructed. The wall is camera ready on this side. In other words, a nice wall. Mm -hmm. But on the back side here, they have a concrete boulder reinforced ramp. Oh, yeah. Right now, there. we couldn't figure that out. We didn't know why the wall wasn't constructed the way that it was with this, uh, with all of this reinforcement in here. Uh -huh. But then we found out, when we saw this movie, it's called Army Girl with Preston Foster, as I was saying, okay. that the tank, when it came to the wall, it climbed the wall. Oh. The, the shot was taken from the other side of yeah. so this. You did not see this ramp. But that's why they built all this reinforcement. You can see it's a much smaller tank than mm -hmm. the ones we're accustomed to. Yeah. But that's what this was built for, and, and left lumpy like this to provide traction for the treads, and that's what this was for. About 1938, like... 1939, Army Girl with Preston Foster, and another mystery in the Alabams solved. Solved again. This. Uh, we're from on the other side of that, and, uh, and then down low there, that you couldn't see this. You just mm -hmm. saw him climb up over it. And it was fantastic. A lot of stuff was done right here in a picture called Westward Ho with John Wayne. Mm -hmm. uh, next time you watch that at the end of the picture, there's a piece where he gets off his horse. These guys, four guys are chasing him and another fella. Uh -huh. And he attaches a lariat to those rocks right there, strings it across the trail. And, uh, and as, the, as the horsemen come across here, chasing Wayne and the other man, mm -hmm. all four horsemen, the horses and riders, go down right here. And when you see the movie, you'll say, I know where that was. I saw that in Jerry's <laughs> video. From, you gotta help me, watching, okay. watching your, watch when you're watching the old westerns. Right up here, you can see that cluster, uh -huh. another wall of rocks yeah. that was built. It looks like it was built as a breastworks mm -hmm. for a gun battle. You know, I see. But I have no idea for what. For what? So when you're watching the pictures, I see that formation. You see that formation. For God's sake, let me know. But you can tell that's not just a, a you know the 
Yeah. Yeah. Water didn't wash those into position there <laughs> or anything. That was put together at great effort. Let's see. Kind of like so. Rex Allen. In the one picture that he made up here, the guy, bad guys in the helicopter are chasing mm -hmm. them. And you can see this is the same wall. He was running up and the helicopter coming in. Oh, right, right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll step back. There we can see it. Yeah. Bad guys in the helicopter chasing Rex. Coming right around the uh, group of rocks over there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just do a quick panorama here. Uh, out of the way. Oh, no, it's all right. Got the car there for perspective. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, this is a... The perspective, I'll know where I was this morning because yeah. there's the front side of the. Comes out to the the abandoned farm of his Japanese friend. Right. And he goes out there, they had the big water, I mean the uh, uh, the windmill and so forth. That was right here. Oh. Taken from back that way, looking over here. So when you see it again, you'll recognize those two outcroppings. Right you know, there. The two pointy guys. Okay. Spencer, Spencer Tracy was right here. Huh. And we will see where Ernest Borgnine, but that's all right. When we had a, come out over here just a second. Uh, in 93, we had the 60th anniversary of the Lone Ranger. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, he created on radio in 1933. And so for that one, we had a concert oh. right here. 28-piece orchestra. Oh, beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? That is gorgeous. It's just a, a phenomenal photo. I really wanted you to see this. Jerry, because it's just, it's Beautiful. just perfect. Yeah. Just perfect. 28 piece orchestra playing uh, a lot of the music from the Lone Ranger serial from the Western movies. And of course, capping it off with the William Tell Overture, the last movement, you know. But we had 300 people on chairs. Right here. Right through here. Clayton Moore was here and John Hart and Leonard Malton and a bunch. The acoustics here must be something. They were perfect. Just perfect. This was where the legend of the Lone Ranger really began. Uh, the ambush story that was not created on radio in 33, but for the 1938 serial. This was where the, the Texas Rangers were, the Texas Rangers were camped, was in this area. Uh, and of course, all of the Rangers were killed, all but right. one. There was one, one Ranger left, the lone survivor, the Lone Ranger, and this, on, th on this very spot, my friends, is where that legend began. Took place right here. Yep, absolutely. He rode up a, 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 a Buck and Bronco here. Roy captured Trigger here for the first time. Oh, he did? Yeah, in a picture called Hands Across the Border. Uh, first time, I mean, you know, story-wise, yeah. when they had him capturing Trigger. Uh, uh, that was done here in this little canyon. It was a great spot to do horse work because you could, you could put up your pins and contain horses in this in this area here, That's a, you know, yeah. really quite easily. So they did a lot of horse work here. Oh yeah, you could over the years. Yeah, around the corners yeah, you could put up oh, barriers. Very easy, very easy to, to do this up. Here's a shot here of this area. Let's see, actually a little bit closer there, but you can make out some of these some of these formations that the cowboys fight. Yeah, the there they are. The deal. You know, what a spot, huh? Beautiful. And this was the three, what they call the three passes. The three yeah. passes, one, okay. Two, three, actually, there were probably four or five. But okay, I, the, the three predominant ones. Yeah. John Wayne and Gabby rode a, a wagon up that one, and the side of the cliff blew up, and John Wayne came down that one there in Westward Ho when he was ambushed in that picture. It's uh, a lot the, of stuff down here. The blockbusters are going to get my money when I get home trying to <laughs> find these. <laughs> Yeah, let's see here. We're in the the car is in the wrong place for this, but it's another another one of the Ward Ward Bond pictures. So sorry for wiggling around on you so much. Sorry. But, but here you have an idea. Ward Bond right behind this rock, just beyond your car door. Okay. 
is where he was hiding there, and then uh, the other bad guys in those in that cluster of rocks there. And these rocks here, you can easily recognize. Oh yeah. You can go to them and then go up to the real guys. There, I guess. Bringing a stagecoach up Lone Ranger Canyon. Oh yeah. Uh huh. So you can see the little dimple in the rock yeah. right over there. Right over there. And so on. Bud Osborne, famous stagecoach driver in the westerns. This was in a Randolph Scott picture. Coming on up. Frank Phelan, Dobie Gillis' father on television. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, played the uh, taxi driver in, uh, yeah, in, in uh, uh, about the Jimmy Stewart picture. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful, wonderful life, life, right. Yeah. Anyway, and then looking back on down to the uh, Lone Ranger ambush site, back down Lone Ranger Canyon okay. there. That's something. And then, and then from over this angle here, you can see uh, from a Tim Holt movie, Tim Holt on lightning. Mm hmm And again, looking back down through Lone there Ranger Canyon behind him. And you can make out that peak yeah. there and those, those boulders easily. There it is. I'll just back up a little and I, yeah, get them both in there. Good. There she be. Whatever. But he would come up and he'd say, we would pray that somebody from the studio wouldn't come up because he said if they ever saw how much fun we had. They wouldn't like it. They, they, they'd never pay us another dime. dime. They'd say, you guys are having enough fun. We don't have to pay you anything, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the, there the it hoppy, is. The hoppy yeah. rocks. There it is. Hoppy in California, mm -hmm. hiding right in that little alcove right there. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the people chasing them, going right on around by where the car is. And, and so on. The Hoppy Rocks That's in the Alabama it. Hills. But tonight you may end up with a nice yeah. with a nice sunset. Frontier Marshall. Stagecoach. He and Doc Holliday were riding the stagecoach. Uh-huh. And they came up into into that area right there. And then they were held up and they had to turn the, the stagecoach around. But just fighting the horses as they were whipping around in through there. This rock is that. Uh, oh, is that guy right there? I right guess. there, yeah. It gives you an idea. It's such a tight, confined area. Yeah, it is. And yet they, which of course made it that much more dramatic. Mm -hmm. they were trying to turn the stagecoach around. In this small little area. Yeah, Gosh. isn't that incredible? Huh. Picture. Now you know where you are, Gene Archer's yeah. Rock is right up there. Right back there. Okay, this was, uh, again, the Alabama Hills were playing India. Here's Errol Flynn, the Seahawk himself, with mm -hmm. Dean Stockwell. In the movie Kim, coming riding right up here, right by where we're standing. Sure did. And then came right along yep. here to the left. Uh huh. Isn't that something? Hmm. Now we walk on up to Geoffrey Rock. Oh, look at yes. Look at and even though you're kind of to find a little bit behind you here, it still is a, a wonderful 360 because you have such a great yeah. place in there. I'm trying to think yesterday, if I came up, up this far, I was probably a little bit closer in towards the rock. Here, just a little bit to get the rocks in the background a little okay. bit closer. There's Archie and, and uh, Smiley Burnett. Yeah, old frog. Sitting there, yeah, old frog mill house, sitting their horses right out there. And there she be. Yeah, boy, you can't mistake that. There's a shot in charge of the, no, in uh, Lives of the Bengal Lancers, uh, where they have the, the Lancers on horseback going right by here. You recognize that in that movie as well. Okay. There's several things done up here, actually. This is Gene Archie Rock, and then this road here, see, we'll take you on back to Gary Cooper Rock. Oh, okay. Here. 
Those right there. Yeah. Prayer rocks. Yeah, because I thought that from the 1938 Lone Ranger serial that it was there that they had done a, a shot uh, with where Lone Ranger was wounded at the very beginning and Tata was praying to his gods. And I thought it was done there. And so we have always called it the prayer rocks. They call that formation that. But, but uh, Bill Whitney, the director, says, no, it wasn't shot there. I don't know where it was shot, but I don't know where we did it, but it wasn't there. Wasn't there. So, but the name is stuck now. Oh, that'd make a nice panorama. It really is. I still, I may do this for my opening shot here too. It, uh, like that shot, yeah, you know, where you were this morning. It's a, it's a great overview. Yeah. And it's a wonderful thing, but maybe for my purposes anyway, things may be too distant. You may not get the mm -hmm. intimate feel of these rocks. Of the rocks. I'm gonna yeah. have to shoot it both ways. Shoot it, you know, here, there, and maybe someplace and try, else, yeah. and see what it looks like. Because uh, particularly on video, reducing it down to the television screen yeah that, that he, spot it may work fine but i'm gonna have to look at it I tiny guys doing the same yeah. thing you see right there on it's that rock see a, 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 an up thrust of some kind uh from the famous bowels of the earth yeah as the rocks were shifting and forming it's just incredible the, yeah it so is it incredible comes right over on those rocks seen that you'll spot these See how it continues right on up the road here? Look on the rock. Now go right up the, the rock on your left. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Yeah, it goes right on it up. It goes right on up. Right on up there. Huh. And, and again, now that you've seen these, you'll spot it more and more throughout the Alabama hills. These little, just straight lines of these rocks. I'm heading toward an area I want you to see. I think it's right over here from how the west was one. A shot not used in the film, but still a mass of Indians. How the West was one, not used in the movie, but. Huh. And they came charging right, right through here. There, yeah. <laughs> See, there are the rocks. We're done up here at the Gary Cooper Rock area. Oh. And that's why I'm kind of wasting some of your time right now looking at these things. Seeing if they're the... Uh, yeah, just to see where it is. This looks like that may be over there. Yeah, from a different angle. Way. It, uh, I'll have to, have to look at some of these. We're going to be up where we can see that from another, from, from that area without having to waste this time and so we can get a, get a look at it. You find, uh, you know, uh, a lot of these stills, like these used bookstores, uh, mm -hmm. that a lot of times you see a and movie stores, like in, yeah. I'm I, I'm sure Atlanta has some some uh, uh, you know some old uh, nostalgia shops yeah. there that has has movie stills and, and whatnot. So now for Eastern, uh, uh, they had a lot of prints of the old airplanes, the old prop planes. Uh huh. Not oh, the negatives yeah. and uh, doing copy work and then reproducing them. And I'll tell you, the technology today with the lenses and developers, sometimes the the reprints are better than the originals. That they, they really are. See, that's Gary Cooper Rock. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now that's yeah, the overhang. Let me get a shot and of that. You know, for a guy with a with a Photoshop, those uh, reproduction cameras and facilities uh, that you know with the computers for God's mm -hmm. sakes. Um, are reasonably priced, so the guy with a mom and pop photo store can afford to do it. If he's yeah. an area that people that want to bring in, you know, the old picture mm -hmm. of Grandma, you know, Rose, that's torn and all just beat to heck, and he bring it back and restore it for them. Yeah. And 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 the work is better than the original ever was. Um, King of the Kyber rifles. Oh yes. Jerome Power. Let me dig out a handful while we're here. Right here, Tyrone Power, walking up this pathway right here, the tents of the uh, Bad Guy Village spread mm -hmm. out all over yonder. You can recognize these formations in the background. Okay. This is entering into what we call the three camp area because there was a 
Indian village with the uh, Indian camp in the Randolph Scott picture and uh, a Russian camp in that Errol Flynn picture. They were all done right in this area. This is a, an Errol Flynn shot that was taken I like to closer into this rock here, but Errol Flynn posed against that rock there for this portrait again from Kim. And you okay. can see these things. Like I say, that's yeah. lower down in this photo okay. because they're actually taken a little bit closer there. Hmm. Oh, with, did you yeah, there it is. That scene with, uh, with Mr. Cooper. Sorry, Mr. Sorry. Cooper there. Again, a scene not in the movie, but there he was underneath the underneath what is now Gary Cooper Rock. Here's a shot from a Naughty Murphy movie with Jan Merlin and Stephen McNally yeah. at the Gary Cooper Rock. One of the all-time good or bad guys. Yeah, really, <laughs> I should say. Gary Cooper and French Tone were, were situated. They had come up, they were supposed to meet this undercover agent and they were at a, at a, a hiding in the rocks right down here. Mm -hmm. And they looked up the hill and the guy leaped off of the top of, of Gary Cooper Rock. Cooper shot him and he rolled down the hill and fell right at the base of the rock behind which Gary Cooper was hiding uh -huh. so that they could pass on the secret message. Now, it, in about 20 minutes from now, I'll show you where the, where the close-up was filmed, about a, about a mile and a half, two miles from here. <laughs> he rolled down the hill here and landed at a spot two miles, miles away. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Errol Flynn, Dean Stockwell. See, running right across here, you can see that formation back yonder. Oh, there it is, yeah. Uh -huh. Again from the movie Kim, Errol Flynn himself. In this area here, looking back this way, Randolph Scott, at the beginning of Comanche Station, now you can see that rock right back over there. And the Indians, he was about to trade for the woman captive, the white mm -hmm. woman that the Indians held captive. And, he, and that was here in this area. Right there. Yeah. And, and in that picture, the pass through which he rode to arrive at this was this area right over here. You can just go right into that area there. Oh, I see. Yeah. What, right down here? Yeah, right, right across there. And it was... Uh, it's a great, it's a great shot. And uh, come riding right on up here, you know, and, and so forth. Yeah, for Ride Lonesome, here is, uh, well, let's see. I guess it's over like about, sort of, kind of, like this. Randolph Scott and James Best. Mm -hmm. That was the camp area right in there. Again, you can see these boulders and that Kay. formation behind them. Right. Okay, so he stood right, right, over, right there. over there. Yep. Yep. Back right. Right there. Again, in, in that same pass down there, taking, this shot was taken a little bit further down the pass, but there's Gary Cooper again in lies of a Bengal Lancer leading uh, this British patrol up that very pass. Mm -hmm. Because you can see these formations see it, yeah. there. Great spot. So he came right. They started riding right up through the pass, right up through here, and right on out. Yep. <laughs> now let's go look at that one spot that the, the overlook groups down there. What we call Bengal Curve, and you can match your rocks easily. Yeah. Got it. Isn't that phenomenal? So here's where the camera was right up here. Yeah, yeah. Now, you know, right over here is where you were before me. Oh, the balance rock or yeah. the... Yeah, but that's what we were looking at. Looking out at over there, see? Remember we parked right there? Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, there's the rock. And then walked around yonder. Yeah, here I'll zoom in on it. 
Yeah, it was right there's your rock. Uh huh. That right foreground rock. Yeah, you just your, barely your, see your, the balance. Picture. Yeah, you just yeah. barely see the top of it. That's it. That's the balance rock right there. Yeah. Yeah, parked right there, and yeah, there's the old campfire. In King of the Khyber Rifles, when Tyrone Power led the British troops back to his brother's camp, they all gathered on the rocks overhead and jumped off of the rocks down I remember that. the tents. And here you can see remnants of how they attached the trampolines. Here. Oh! See, all of these, these uh, iron little rods went into, into the rocks. Here's a little o-ring here. Yeah, still okay. sticking out. And another one. And so these completely surrounded just rock facing. Completely surrounded the facing here. So they had the traps down here and, and they would leap off, the stunt guys would leap off. Right up there. Into them, yeah. They continue on around. To all the way around. Yeah, around you can see it all the way over there too. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So here's where, now where would the, the camera would be? Back Camera over was, there. Was about where we are looking. Oh, okay. So they, they oh, oh, down. I see. Right in front and of us. Yeah. Where, where okay. They were going. Yeah. Yeah, that's where they lived. No, I'm sorry. Let's see. There was the village that was over there. For the movie. For the movie. The village, right. And then. The temple. Pocket. Yeah, the temple, and was I thought there was another. Yeah, there was. There was uh, the fort. On the Indian fort Springs that Road. was over Indian Springs Indian Road. Road. Right. Now that's over to what to the right of that housing area yeah, over there. Yeah, it's, okay. Uh, you go out to Horseshoe, and then uh, and then hang a left on Sunset, and you're back in there. Yeah, yesterday I went up there and then came back through that turtle turtle uh, tuttle tuttle, yeah, around the hoppy cabin, and uh -huh. that's beautiful back in there. Oh, yeah. Okay, action. This is your eight acre village mm -hmm. that was built for Gunga Dean. And it's easy to recognize the spot because you have these formations here with the Sierra coming right out of the, the second mm -hmm. little pooch there. So yeah. you can recognize that quite easily. In fact, my frame right here is as far as from left to right uh -huh. as exact as your picture. Oh, excellent. And you can see that it was pretty well bulldozed flat. Mm -hmm. No brush out there. Now this was 50 something years ago. Yeah. But finally it has grown back and, and doesn't look, now we, this would not be allowed today. Okay, you they wouldn't could like not smooth it off like that. Cause it only, cause it, like I say, it takes 55 years to grow back. Just to grow back. You know, you, huh. can't, uh, you can't do that. Try because things grow slow out here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at a couple of uh, Cisco Kid and Randolph Scott. Oh. Box up here. Again, the Cesar Romero system kid. Ronaldo didn't get up here. He was up here in a couple of three musketeer pictures, but not as the system here. I have some trivia for you. Leo Carrillo yeah. was my grandmother's uh, neighbor in no, Santa Monica. Absolutely. They grew up together and oh, went to school together. Fun. Of course, I. Oh. she died before I, when I was, gosh. That's great. Now here, See, this was a late afternoon shot because you can see okay. in the photo the sun is coming in here uh -huh. whereas now the sun is above us but maybe you can make out some of these striations in the rock and yeah. the round rock right down there. right there you know cisco uh, cesar romero cisco kid chris Finn martin is his poncho mm -hmm. ray teal who was the sheriff oh bonanza. yeah bonanza yeah you know i'm taping all the reruns of bonanza oh, how fun well they did a two a two-part bonanza here in in lone pine I was going to ask uh, you which one. Fleming. Okay, because I haven't run across that one it's yet. A, it's, a, it's a good show. Bill Whitney directed it. A lot of good horse work at the end. Now what's fun is just turn right around here, like so. Randolph Scott, Richard Boone, the tall T. The tall T, yes. See, you can see these rocks and this the shack was built right up against that facing there. Again, an example of uh, films being done at exactly the same location. Oh, was this the spot where the, ca where, the, uh, where the cave, and at the final end, he comes riding off. Remember, he, he takes off and he turns around 
and Randolph Scott's waiting for him, knowing he's going to do it, and he comes back around shooting. Of course, Randolph gets him. Yeah. But if that's a cave right there, that's the one, Could or the be. entrance right here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. Could be. If you watch the movie again. I'll have to now because I don't remember that okay. sequence. Okay. He, uh, he, Richard Boone takes off in this direction and uh -huh. I assume goes out of sight, yeah. probably around there. Uh -huh. And then right at the end, then he turns around and comes racing back through here. Randolph's in the cave over here and he, I think he rolls out and shoots him well, and right here. And the reason I know, because I just saw the movie a couple of weeks ago. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's still that's fresh. Great. Yeah, that's so great. this is where that was taken. Yes, sir. Okay. A, a lot of work here. A lot of work here. Now just r r walk right over here. You'll look up, and you can look up into up in this direction. Remember when the girl's husband was going to ride off at some point in the movie, and he was going to ride through that pass. Oh yeah, he was going to go get the the what the father had the had the yeah. the money. And that was the way that he went. Oh of course, okay. That that drops off right up there, so you don't try and do okay. that. Okay. And Richard Boone, I think, shot him. Yes, that's up right. There. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. You see where they're uh, uh, bringing the commercials back to buy reruns of uh, Have Gun, Will Travel. Oh. I've seen on uh, one of the uh, They did some channels. of those up here, too. Yeah, in fact, I think in the commercial, you see just a second of, uh, Wonderful. of rocks. Great. Now, you know, we were talking yesterday about the very slight elevation can give you such a different yeah. perspective. Oh, look at these, look at these gorgeous flowers here. If you're oh, sure. yeah. Get My wife down. will want to see those because we'll she says, the, where's the, the colors? Let's give you some in the shade there so it'll really pop for you. There it did. See, Marge, there is growth out here. That's what makes the desert fun, Marge. Right. <laughs> and come on out here, honey, so we can show you some of this, really and truly. Come on. Beautiful. Anyway, this is a shot. This is a good sunset shot for you to think about with your panorama. Right here at the bridge location, you know where mm -hmm. you are. Yeah. Your bridge is around there. Now then, get up into here and look at this thing, Jerry. Oh, wow. Now with your camera, mm -hmm. this is gonna be phenomenal. Oh, that will. And, and of course your sun is off to your right. Yeah. So you've got your cross light. Mm -hmm. and, and so your shadows, see, are you know stretched out horizontally, yeah. obviously across from these guys and it's a great spot and you got some good foreground mm -hmm. here. yeah see? right here you know so you can get to get your depth perspective beautiful it is beautiful yeah. it's, a good, it's a good location it's a very good location for a shot mm. again from the tall t he was crouched in that little alcove right oh, back right there. Oh, right there, yeah. Right there. Now this, let's see. This is that Whoops. rock, yeah, that's not here. Yeah, that's that, that one right one up right there. there. That's okay. right there, that's yeah. right. there, so he's right behind there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Huh, we'll have to look for that again. I'm trying to remember which part of the movie that was in. This was, I think it's maybe, well, I forget, I forget too, but in the film also, was where this was, in that same spot, uh -huh. was where they had the, uh, uh, looked like an old tobacco stick, if you ever cropped tobacco and, and cured it, uh -huh. you know, as they do in Georgia, uh, stretched across there, and that's where they had hung some venison, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, he was cleaning it, I yeah, remember that. Yeah, yeah. Now, where was that? Right? It was right in the same alcove, right here. Well, right here, right he was here. cleaning that, yeah. yeah, he was cleaning the venison. The, the, uh, the stick came across like so, and the venison was hanging here. I'll be done. And he and, uh, he and uh, Maureen O'Sullivan, yeah. Jane, Tarzan's Jane, Jane. right here. <laughs> uh, she and Randolph Scott were here doing something or another, who knows what they were. Okay. Don't ask what they were doing. It's yeah. None of our <laughs> They'd have now. Usually, would they bring big trucks up here with batteries? Oh, uh, yeah. for the so they don't have the sound uh, as you would with a generator. 
Oh no, they would, they would, they still work with, with big generators. You just, you just have them baffled. They have special coverings if they have to sit too close. I see. You know, and then sometimes they'll just run cable for a hundred yards. And move there's, it there's up, drop off of downwind course, or I mean, something. They know yeah. What they're doing, I and mean, you know, oh sure, they would have have to bring all that stuff, particularly and and even into the 50s and 60s when these when Dr. Randolph Scott picture was done, they would uh, still have to bring up their 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 uh, generators and the big trucks and whatnot. That's why you need a lot of room yeah. to shoot in, you know. Yeah, you look at some of the, the, the scenes or you had in your book uh, a shot with the big trucks and all the dressing trailers. And the... Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they still do it. When we had Maverick up here for a month and a half or so and the shadow was up for two or three days, uh, they still do all kinds of... Uh, all kinds of support vehicles. They have to have them. Yeah. Now with Maverick, what part of the movie I saw it? It's been a few months, but I'm trying to think what part of the movie. Well, they had a major sequence that, and I don't have any photos with me, but they had a major sequence that was done here in the rocks that, that was omitted completely. Ah. When he, at the very beginning of the picture, when he, uh, they were going to hang him, and those snakes yeah. were along the side of the yeah. ground or something. The snakes belonged to a little, little tiny lady. Linda Hunt played her. She was called the magician, and she saved his life. And uh, and she had built a a, a split level cabin here in the rocks. Mm -hmm. It was just like uh, Swiss Family Robinson, but but the split level was in the rocks instead of in the trees, you know? Mm -hmm. And and so they, it was about a 20 minute uh, section of the film edited, and they had to leave it out because they just were running out of time. Time, yeah, it was a long movie. But they still used some, they still, but they headquartered here, and they filmed all of that, and then, uh, then they did some of the wagon train stuff here up at Manzanar and up at Big Pine. Uh, they did a lot of the, the uh, wagon train business. They did some of the, uh, uh, the stuff on the road up to Whitney Portal, where they had, uh, uh, you can see Mount Whitney behind Mel, and so on. So there's still representation of Lone Pine. That's Mount the, Whitney right there. There you go. <laughs> Not there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a story we'll tell from now yes. on. But, uh, but at least there's enough of, of Lone Pine and Mount Whitney and the Sierras and, and surrounding areas that we can still claim mm -hmm. accurately uh, Maverick as a Lone Pine movie. Good. Know, so. I'll have to I'll have to re rent it. Well, I saw it in the theater and then I'll have to uh, rent yeah, it. You'll, be, and look you'll, again. Spot some, you'll spot some areas, not particularly now that you're more familiar. But yeah. the big rock sequence that was here, and there's part of a rock wall. Mm hmm. See it? Yeah. So, so, so. Now that's interesting. So either they, I wonder if that, wouldn't that be fun if that were part of the old Gunga Dean village? That would be. I wonder how you could date it. Of course, I don't know with that know. steel, with that mesh, you'd think after how many years? Uh, 50, well, 55 years. Yeah, 56. Yeah. 50, yeah. Gosh. Well, it has some beauty in, in a certain way. <laughs> I guess with all the rust. Well, thank God. <laughs> I wonder if they, what, some movie where they drove it off the cliff or? Yeah. Yeah, look, it just goes right on through. The, up to John Wayne Point, it goes up like this. Yeah. It comes down like so. Uh -huh. Okay. Then right over here, you have the cluster of rocks, mm -hmm. and you have the, the rocks going up like, I mean, the road going up like that. The little oh, yeah, yeah, winding. Okay. But when this guy winds up to the top up there, you can drive up that in a, uh, you know, in a regular passenger vehicle. Yeah. And that, from that spot there, you can see it kind of broadens uh -huh. out into a, more of a disturbed area, yeah. clearing. Uh, looking back this way toward the Sierras is a magnificent vista. Okay. So there's your there's your second recommended All right. sunset stop for when Marge comes out. Yeah. <laughs> ah, more vegetation, Marge. A green tree. <laughs> the thing is, before the, the ground smooths off, it comes down like a, like this. The hill comes down like so, right? Uh huh. Okay, and then you see the road going up it. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Just up at the top of that road is an area where he did that last Great Western commercial. Commercial. 
So back on the downside of that. Yeah, it, it flattens out there. And uh, that was uh, where he did his last one. Last one. Here now, in Lone Pine. Now, how long was that before he, he died? Within year a year? Two. Yeah, because this was about 74, 76. Yeah. Something like that. Entrance to the hideout. You can get a, when it's dry, you can get a horse back through there. Yeah, big canyon. Fantastic. Oh, I see the pipe. So the bridge went right over like this. Right to there where the elephant stood. Yep, that's the spot. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you know, everything's relative. I know for my mother died, she was in her 80s, and I was moaning, you know, here I am this age. She said, oh, that's, if I were only 50 again, I and I'd say it. everything's relative. Oh, I know it. <laughs> You know, you talk to some of the you talk to some of the uh, the movie people that come up here. You know, and they're mm -hmm. in their 70s and 80s, and we'll be talking, and they'll say, "Dave, how old are you?" And I and I say, "Well, I'm 56 or something." They say, "Oh my God, you're God. a kid, kid, a real kid." You know, <laughs> that was four years ago, but I can say that. Yeah. You know? it, uh, and how fast it goes the older you get. Oh, I mean, each yeah. year just zips by. That's right. That's right. Okay. Where's Roy? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, you remember when we were up at Gary Cooper Rock and we saw where the guy jumped off the rock, rolled, got shot, rolled yeah. down the hill? This is where he landed. Right here. This is about a mile and a half, two miles from there. See, here's a, here's a spot. Here's a big camera. Mm -hmm. The guy lying there, Gary Cooper and Fran Chotone, with a little mattress for his elbow. Uh huh. And they're right behind this rock here, and you can recognize the... Sure can. The cleft in the rock yeah. behind him and so forth. I certainly can. Now then, again, in the vein of so much done at exactly the same spot, here we have Gary Cooper, lies of a Bengal Lancer. We walk around the rock, come around to here, to this area, hop along Cassidy scene. Ah. William Boyd, Jimmy Ellison, and then see off in the background there, the raw, there's the rawhide burial yeah. site. See, right over there behind, and uh, William Boyd standing right standing there. Standing right there. Right there, my friends. Can you believe it? So much done at the same spot, years apart. You'd never know. Unless Dave Holland came out here <laughs> <laughs> and found it. <laughs> Isn't it neat? Now let's see, those are the rawhide rocks rawhide there. Rawhide burial site there. Uh-huh. Okay, right there. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to get that movie because that doesn't oh, ring the bell. Oh, get a rolling shot. Okay. Approaching the uh, the burial location in in Rawhide. Tyrone Power and Susan Hayward burying Edgar Buchanan scene that was filmed right here. Right there. Oh, now I wrecked it from the book. Now I see the rocks. Yeah, the, the right, big, right. Yeah. Now those rocks up there, we've come to call this the bowling alley because you've got, maybe you can see it here. I'll get where the sun okay. is on it. You have the round, see right where Tyrone Power and Susan mm -hmm. Hayward are and the, and the grave, the, the round rock that is still there. And then you have these guys that you can yeah. see over there, which do resemble uh, bowling pins. Bowling pins, So we yeah. can say this if we've uh, facetiously started calling the bowling, the bowling alley. alley. Now you can look and see, see we're pretty much at the site. Yeah. The so bowling ball over there, right where, where yeah, the grave let's was. See, let's see, where's the rock? I just had it in my sight here a minute ago. It doesn't want to focus through that glass. Oh, oh. Uh, wait a well, minute. Here, I'll tell you what, let me put up a little. And you can get that rock. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh. There it is, okay. Got it, okay. The bowling ball, and then uh, off to your right. Again, maybe have trouble through the glass. No, I got it. Near the pins. The bowling pins, you know. With mm -hmm. all the camera, the crew, yeah. the cables. 
So you really have Director a good Director Henry person. Hathaway. That's Hathaway right there. Right there. And Jack Elam on the horse right there. Oh, yeah. Isn't he such a good actor? Oh, boy. He plays the best parts, whether they're good, bad, or funny. He's, yeah, I know it. He really does. He's he's wonderful. I read somewhere he was, a, what, a school teacher originally? or He had done that. He was an accountant. An accountant? <laughs> when he was up here for the Hopalong Cassidy picture, uh -huh. he was working in the payroll department and signed their checks. Is that right? That's right. He, so he worked hoppies up here, but not as an actor, and he was signing the checks on payday. And somebody saw him and said, you, you're a I natural. Said, he said, the, the guy with the bad eye, put him out Yeah, put him out. Over here. <laughs> you know? Now, well, he, he would just do that. He could, it's just that he didn't have a bad eye. He could just roll it, I guess. Well, I don't know. Here's a, in, uh, in uh, How the West Was Won, the scene mm -hmm. where Gregory Peck is playing poker in the back of one of the wagons. Yeah. And Robert Preston comes riding up, grabs him, and throws him out of the uh -huh. throws him out of the uh, wagon. Uh, that was done just above the photograph. You'll recognize this triangular rock here, and some of the rock formations against the cliff face there. Oh, there it is. Right. See an, oh, okay. <laughs> Do I? No, that's all right. No. I'll just, well, I'll just so I can show the, the picture and the, the triangle. Well, again, this was in How the West Was Won when Gregory Peck was in the back of the covered wagon playing poker. Robert Preston came up, grabbed him, threw him out mm -hmm. of the wagon, and that was done here also at the uh, Rawhide Burial Site. Look for this triangular rock mm -hmm. and then the little crevices in the rock behind it directly right over right there. Right there, yeah. And again, pan over to the uh, bowling ball so you'll see we're mm -hmm. at, the same, at the same spot. Same spot. Right there. Got it. Okay. Not, you know, mainly, uh, uh, certainly the, the, the money was a consideration, because uh, this way, if there's any profit, we get it. We don't, mm -hmm. get, we don't get 2% of it. Yeah, you we know? get it all. Uh, but when you figure on wholesale basis, you're, you're giving a retailer 40%, 45%. Yeah. That's almost half. You that know? is, and some want more. You darn tootin' they do, you know, depending on the volume of sales they give you. You know, if you've got a hot spot, then they, then they want yeah. and maybe should have a little touch yeah. extra, you know. It's like the farmer. He gets less than anybody. And the, the... And he's a son of a gun that yeah, knows all that that's stuff. right. Absolutely. Anyway, uh, but also, not only for that consideration, but I didn't want, like when I was doing the Lone Ranger book or doing the Lone Pine book, I didn't want to have to stand there and argue with somebody. Mm -hmm. I've got to have a shot in here of, of Jack Elam. Yeah. Who in the hell is that? Why do we have to do, yeah. do a half a page on him? Oh, well, I mean, that's ridiculous yeah. to argue that with somebody right. who doesn't know, that the doesn't, subject, know. doesn't know the subject right. matter. You know, so that was why, that was maybe the main reason that we did both books ourselves. This is called the cattle pocket. Oh. This is okay. the cattle pocket where we're going because when they would work their cattle, uh, in the movies, they could bring them out here and then overnight them in this area, mm -hmm. keep them here overnight, uh, and then at sun up the next morning, because you know, you can have one or two guys yeah. who can keep the, the cattle contained back here. Uh, now, would they, they eat the sage pocket. or the brush sure, or the. Natural, natural pocket. And oh, it works sure is. Oh, it sure does. See, this is a nice mm -hmm. open area. You can keep them back here. Yeah, you just picture the stagecoach coming along oh, this trail right here. I should here. say. I should say. Let me show you a couple of shots here. We may not even have to get out. Now let's see if you get up to here. You can. Here we go. This was in a picture, Hopalong Cassidy, called Dangerous Venture. Mm -hmm. Tolmec Indians, descendants of the Aztecs or the Toltecs, uh, had a sacrificial altar back here and they were going to sacrifice California for some reason. Mm -hmm. Hoppy and Lucky came around, obviously just in time. But this flat area is right over here, this big flat rock. Right there. And, and that's where that was. That's where that is. They're standing right there. They're standing right up on top of that. And then back over this way, sorry to make you pan so quickly, mm -hmm. here's a, from the same picture, Hoppy and, and, uh, and Rand Brooks is lucky, and the gal, she was the gal archaeologist mm -hmm. in the picture. We're standing right by this rock right out in front of us right here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Ugh. 
there, right there. It's, it's this one right here in front. Oh, of this me. one. Okay, excuse because me. Because you can see the you can see the little. little oh, okay, yeah. Right 